Hebrews 11.17, 11.17, book of Hebrews. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. And whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians essayed to do, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. I'll stop my reading there. Our message entitled this morning, Just Look at What They Did. Just look at what they did. Hebrews chapter 11, commonly referred to by several subtitles of the roll call of the faithful, the roll call of the heroes of faith, faith hall of fame. Uh, you may have heard, have heard some of them or maybe some others. But those mentioned in this hall of fame or this roll call of the faithful, if you will, are referred to as a group uh, back in verse number 2, as the elders, the elders. I'm pointing this out for me. I'm sure you remember it and it's not necessary. But the elders simply refer to, if you will, the old guys, the old people. Don't you love being called old people? That's literally what it means. It means the folk in the old day who walked with God, the folk who walked with God in days gone by, the folk who made it into God's record, or in other words, the people that did it right. The old timers. Now, if some of y'all want, may want to tune me out here, but we're living in a day where if something's old, it's wrong. Okay? Some of you say, what are you talking about? I, I don't know, so I can't tell you. If something's from the past, it needs to stay there. Uh, if, something, if it's something that our forefathers did, we need to not do it. Uh, we need to reinvent it, or we need, as one saying went, we need to reimagine it. You ever watch any of the building shows on TV? And they, and uh, I hear some of them say, "Oh, that looks so much like the 1980s, with this real negative, you know, thing." Huh? 1980. Y'all, 1980s? I was old in 1980. There ain't nothing wrong with 1980. Anybody? And they tell me if it's about 1970, then it's an antique and it's worth more. Uh, what's happening to our thinking? If it's old, it's wrong, you know. At least to some folks. A few years back, uh, a wind quote-unquote, that blew through our liberal churches, and this is an honest-to-goodness phrase, they were going to re-image Jesus. Anybody remember that? Re-imaging Jesus. 
And basically, and obviously this is my take on uh, what they did, but basically they were saying we need to give Jesus a facelift. Uh, we need to give Jesus a fresh new look for the new generations. We need to make Jesus and His church look a little better uh, so folks will like Him better. Now this really did happen, y'all. Now the next part that I've got down here, if you don't like it, uh, don't listen to it. Okay? Uh, what this reminded me of, the business about needing to make something look better, uh, it's like the old balding man who wanted to look better and be more attractive does what they call a comb over. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I know my brother back there don't know nothing about it. Not me. Hey, anybody know what I mean? Think, now don't get mad. Y'all, it ain't been 11.30. You get mad now, you'll have a stroke by 3 o'clock this afternoon. That's when Catfish has got a bald head, but he's got one piece of hair that grows over his ear here. Anybody following me? And you comb it over the top to try and cover up some of the bare real estate. And it goes round and round and round and round. You think, my, what a wonderful head of hair that guy's got. No, it's not a head of hair. It's a hair to comb over. And you're thinking to yourself, Hoss, all the time you spent with that 19-foot piece of hair you got, you could have been eating hamburgers or doing something reproductive, more productive. Why bother? Hey, leave it alone. It looks fine the way it is. There ain't nothing wrong with having a chrome dome. Anybody? Some of y'all are being careful out there. You can't talk about being old, fat, or bald unless you're that way. That's why I talk about it all the time. But ladies, I don't want to leave nobody left out. Uh, this business about trying to make something look better, someone suggested that. And please, don't anybody get mad. It's 1131 now. It, I saw this. It's like a fat woman... Ain't nobody here fat. I'm not saying anybody's fat, right? It's like a fat woman who wants to look better and look more attractive, so she puts on short shorts and gets a tattoo. I saw her yesterday at the steakhouse. Had I seen her earlier on, I wouldn't have spent thirty dollars. A glass of water would have been all I wanted. And you're thinking to yourself, listen, sister, don't do that. It ain't helping nothing. You say, you shouldn't say stuff like that. I'm trying to make a point. You see, the end justifies the means. Amen? Some things you ain't going to fix. Some things don't need fixing. And y'all, who here knows that Jesus don't need a facelift? No way, Jose. How many people here knows that the only thing outdated about Jesus and the church are his critics? And somebody said, listen, every complaint ever raised about Jesus and or his church, or that could be rather, has already been raised. You can't come up with no new criticism. We've had worse said by better in perpetuity, it's just that simple. His critics have never had a leg to stand on, never will, and everyone who's ever tried to complain about Christ or the church always lives to regret it. It's that simple. You say, well, that's your opinion. Yeah, but this opinion comes out of the Bible. Amen? Ain't got nothing to do with me. It's just the way that things are. Who here knows that the first one that tried to re-image Jesus was the serpent. Right? You follow where I'm coming from, this re-image business? He was in the garden, and he starts telling the church at that point, that's not what God really said, and that's not what God really meant. And listen, you got the whole wrong idea about God. Let me set you straight on a few things. That's re-imaging Jesus. Now, some of y'all ain't going to believe this next part, but I know you believe everything else I say. A few years ago, got a packet in the mail from the World Council of Churches. Everybody know that outfit? 
<clears throat> I ain't going to say nothing about them. After I tell you what they sent me, I won't need to. It has some suggestions, and, and y'all, this is the truth. And everything I'm fixing to tell you, I got it on paper. That's what they call hard copy. All right? I got it over there in my file cabinet uh, under lock and key. They were making suggestions about the upcoming World Day of Prayer. Now, obviously, y'all, we believe in prayer. Amen? We believe in praying for the world. Amen? We believe in joining with everybody in the world that wants to pray in Jesus' name. So that part wasn't the problem. But the first suggestion that they made, and I'm telling you the truth, was that this year we're going to try praying to Mother God. Some of y'all are thinking, I knew I should have changed that battery before I got here. <laughs> you didn't say Mother God. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Listen, the World Council of Churches suggested that God is both male and female. Now follow me if you will. And so since he's both male and female, we could just as easily refer to him as our mother, which art in heaven. And I even heard one of them say, in fact, I heard this in a meeting one day, uh, someone prayed, our heavenly parents who are in heaven. Y'all are thinking, you ain't telling the truth. I'm telling you the truth. But let me ask you this, y'all. Now, you know we're made in the image of God. Anybody here have parents that look just alike? Come on, help me now. Anybody here, both male and female? Anybody? Don't be pointing no fingers now. How about the bearded lady at the circus? She was in the freak show. Anybody? And this is the world council of churches. They went on to explain that the reason for this suggestion, quote unquote, is that we, and this is a quote, we must keep God becoming in our eyes. I.e., we got to make sure it always looks good. Anybody here think it's your job to make God look good? Some of y'all are thinking, it must be your job to make the preachers look bad. <laughs> that, no, listen, I'm telling you the truth, y'all. And then they warned that some may find this uncomfortable. You don't mean? <laughs> yes. Y'all, I got it in the mail. In fact, I corresponded back and forth with them for a short while. Well, they were sending me all grades of very interesting material. And then all of a sudden they stopped for some reason. I don't know why that was. But anyway, as we must always do when uh, we come across anything that's suspect, uh, anything that smacks of what the old timers called heresy, you got to go back into the Bible. So I went back into the Bible and there's surely ain't somebody just made something up and started printing it and passing it around the world. There's got to be something in the book about that. Went back, started looking into what. Look here, y'all. And this won't come as any news to anybody. God's always referred to as a He. Amen. Just like Adam, Abraham, and Noah. God's never referred to as a she, just like Adam, Abraham, and Noah. And that was the end of controversy right there. He said, well, how'd that happen? Because of the Bible. Aren't you glad you got a Bible? Amen. My wife, she's not here. She's upstairs. Bless her heart. And I hate to ever talk about her. And I certainly hate to talk about her when she ain't here. She uses her Bible for many things, one of which is a file cabinet. You pick it up and no telling what's going to fall out of them pages. She told me one day she lost her glasses. My first thought was, it's in Galatians. <laughs> I don't know if she ever found them or not. But anyway, go back to the book, amen? You say, what a coincidence. You just go in the Bible and everything comes up lovely. Now there's no coincidence about that, y'all. Anytime you go to the Word of God, be there controversy, argument, dispute, quarrel, altercation, conflict, tension, or strife, since it's the Word of God, since it's the Bible, since it's the inspired, infallible, inerrant, and total Word of God, you know why it works? Because that's where faith comes from, and in faith there's no gray area. In faith, there's no fear. In faith, there's nothing but confidence in a God who is, was, and always will be. In 
and there you can stand no matter what wind blows your way. Amen. The Word of God! Aren't you glad for it? I am. And I'm, and, uh, and I'm going to be glad when I quit hollering too, by the way. Faith comes from the Bible. Nowhere else. Someone said, much Bible, much faith. Little Bible, little faith. No Bible, no faith. Just that simple. That's why you go to churches where they don't preach the Bible. Wonder why it's hard to tell who they serve. Okay. Amen. Good preaching. Thank you. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35. Faith told us that's how the disciple, or we're told, faith is how the disciple lives. 11.1, faith is defined. 11.6, faith is the only way we can be right with God. 11.14, faith is how we disciples declare who we are and where we're headed. We've got to have faith. Amen? Amen. Amen? Hebrews 11, we're given 10 names of 10 folks who did 10 specific things. Now, there's six more names mentioned in there. In fact, verse 32 and following. Uh, we're, we're not told, of course, in this passage <clears throat> of their exploits. We know about them since we're Bible students. But ten particulars, and we've looked at the first five, and every one of these five did amazing things by faith. Now for me, if not for you, faith is being persuaded that God's Word is the truth. Faith is being willing to be affected by God's Word. That it is God's, it is true, and it is for me. That's what faith is. It's not enough to hold it in a vacuum. Well, I'm just going to try and have faith. Well, have faith in what? Have faith in who? Got to put all those pieces together. Now remember, Paul is using these testimonies in Hebrews 11 to show his Hebrew audience that this life of faith is real. That he's not trying to sell them a product that don't work. Uh, was looking up a piece of equipment. Or I should, I'm not saying that right. She was looking up a piece of equipment on her little uh, a laptop thingamabob the other day. For me, of course. And uh, first thing it said, well, no, I'm getting my story confused. Uh, you can ask for a review of this particular piece of equipment, the brand name, and this, that, uh, well, this fellow pops up on the screen there. And the very first thing he said was, what to do when the motor blows up? <laughs> it, would that bother anybody else? <laughs> I thought, wait a minute, the first thing in the review, what, well, anyway. <laughs> Paul's telling these people, I'm not selling you a bogus product. You people have got the, the want to, and it's been for 10 chapters of up and back and up and back and, up and maybe this, maybe no, no, no. It's the real deal, and because it's real, let me remind you of some testimonies of folks who have done it, and there's no reason to draw back. There's no reason to go to plan B. Anybody here ever eat a veggie burger? <laughs> veggie burger? Well, if you like them, that's fine. I woke up the other night to a commercial. It said, and it showed this great big old hamburger. They're like 58% less fat than a normal hamburger. And I thought, man, what are they? They must be making it out of possum meat or something. Wonder what they did. And about the third or fourth time I saw the commercial, I saw on the box, it's a veggie burger. <laughs> and I thought, why would I wake up to see a box of a veggie burger? If I'm going to eat a burger, y'all, I want it to be a hamburger. Anybody? She tried to feed me cauliflower mashed potatoes too, not too long ago. <laughs> I don't want no cauliflower, mashed potato. Give me cauliflower, give me mashed potato. Give me something that's real and genuine. Paul says, look here. Faith caused these ten to do amazing things. You've no reason to go back 
to a veggie burger religion. How about this one, y'all? Abel. Abel stood up to peer pressure. They talk about peer pressure amongst the teens, y'all. And you or me, if you're like me, you didn't know nothing about peer pressure till you became an adult. It's that pressure that those beside of you, in front of you, behind you, put on you to try and get you to act right. See, Abel did right while those around him did religion. Okay, right? You say religion? What's wrong with religion? Well, in Bible terminology, or maybe I should just say perspective, religion ain't a good thing. Now, religion's what you put up in place of Christianity. If you will, it's man-made Christianity. It's man-edited Christianity. It's watered-down, whitewashed, don't need the Bible Christianity. Religion is no one can recognize in heaven that kind of Christianity. Cain brought God a present. Abel brought God what he needed to cleanse his sin. A blood sacrifice. He did right when those around him were doing wrong. And I thought to myself, my soul, this is where many people in our modern day churches are today. They're having to decide, am I going to do Christianity Cain's way? Or am I going to do it the right way? Am I going to do Christianity the carnal way, the flesh way, the world's way, the liberal way? Or am I going to do it the Bible way? But the Bible's old-fashioned. So's God. Amen? Anybody? I particularly like the fact that the same God I pray to is a 20-year-old still on the throne today. Amen. A long time ago. People are having to decide, listen, am I going to follow the trend way? Am I going to go along with the crowd way? Or am I going to do it the Bible way, God's way, the right way? And you'll excuse the pun, but by faith, Abel was able to be faithful because of faith. It gave him steel in his backbone to the point where he could watch Cain and still do the right thing. What our world today needs are Christians willing to do the right thing. Yeah, but don't, nobody going to like me. God will. <laughs> you remember the old saying? God plus anybody makes a majority. Amen. Ain't nobody ever voted God down. Amen. Y'all say amen broke or something? What in the world? Help me out here. <laughs> it's a simple recipe. The Bible is true. The Bible is for me. Anything less, anything other won't work, won't get you where you want to be, and that's faithful to God. Amen. Amen. People who are struggling in their faith are people who are struggling with believing that the Bible is plain truth, and it's plainly for me. You can't read this and Betty Crocker and expect to make it through life a success. Amen. It's here, y'all, and you've got to take it just like it is. You get in the business of editing, and you're going to get in the business of failing. Amen. Just that simple. And aren't you glad? What in the world would it be like if you had to be a professor of whistle bridges to make it to heaven? The wayfaring man, though a fool, the Bible says, can understand what he needs to do. And so Paul said, listen guys, listen. If you want to get to where the heroes of faith were, all that's required is just believing that it's the truth and that it's for me. It ain't enough just to believe it's the truth and it's for her. That it's for him. It's for me. Wonder how many in here like me have wasted time wondering why God don't fix somebody else. You know, what ails God? He must really be getting old. He can't see. Not like me. You've got to wear the bifocals, the trifocals. The dude told me the other day, you know, you can get some trifocals. I thought to myself, why? I already get whiplash every time I try to drive a nail as it is now. Trifocal? I get a tri-colored thumbnail. Gosh, and this way, what, what, God, what about so-and-so? And then 
you have to get back in the Word of God and you realize that God's using old so-and-so to get old me of my here where I need to be. I'm the problem. Me. There are things in me that God don't want to put that USDA stamp on yet. And it's got to be worked on. Uh, Lily told us the other day about clay having to be all, you know, mashed. That God wants to mash it. Ain't that a blessing? And somebody said, well, it's like a piece of meat. I asked Paul the other day. I better not mention his name. He may get mad at me. He's a cattle man. I huh? said, so what do they do with a big old bull? He told me about a bull that weighed 2,000 pounds. Two man, I'd vote for him for president if he told me to. <laughs> 2,000. That's a ton. That's a great thing. I thought to myself, what do they do with all that meat? He said they make a hamburger out of it. <laughs> but hey, man, 2,000 pounds of hamburger. But you know what they got to do? Now, I'm not a cattleman, get me wrong. Hamburger man, that's me, cattleman. But they got to take that big old hunk of meat and they got to grind him up. He's tough to take him like he is. And forgive me for putting it this way, but me like I is is tough. God's got to grind me up to make me palatable. But what about old so-and-so? Uh-huh, I'm using him to grind you up a little bit. <laughs> That's about as bad as finding out about tithing. I just wanted to get saved. I didn't want to start tithing. What in the world else? Well, anyway. Can't God see? Yeah, he can see. That's my whole problem. That's the good thing. But it works! Then we got Enoch. Enoch experienced the supernatural. Anybody here like the supernatural? Good. Not, you say, well, how supernatural was it? He went from being here to not being here. Hey, how much more supernatural can it get? <laughs> he couldn't even stand around and brag about it. Then there was Noah. I heard somebody put it this way. He had to let his little light shine in a world full of darkness. He didn't have the six people in his whole church. And his wife, I don't think she showed up half the time. Talk about this little light, but he had to be faithful. But you know what? He was enabled to be faithful even though the whole flood tide of the world was in darkness. How did he do that? By faith. Amen. He believed it was true, and he believed it was for him. That's all he had. He didn't have no 12-step program, amen. He didn't have no, uh, uh, what do they call the groups? They sit around and talk about their problems. Anybody? <laughs> How about the groups where the preachers to sit around and talk about <laughs> the problems they cause, whatever. Support. He didn't have no support crew. Yeah, but he had the Word of God. Amen. Abraham had to get his priorities in order. God first. Everything else, not first. Yeah. I, if, I, I'm talking to me now, so don't get mad. Yeah, but if I can get that straight, everything else will fall in place. got to be God number one. And some of us today, are, I want God to share number three with my golf cart <laughs> or my new tobacco or my fishing boat. He said, and, and God ought to be happy with that. No. Try that on your wife. Men? Anybody? Help me now. Dear, you're all right, but you're number three. I'm going to spend a little time with number two. Uh huh. Enjoy it. Is you liable to get to it in? Uh uh. But by faith he did it. He was able to do it. Sarah had to come to grips with the fact that God gives the help to do whatever God requires. Don't it tickle y'all old folks? Ain't nobody here as old as me. I'm too old to do that. You ain't too old to bellyache. I ain't getting Where's my sign? I'm going to get me another sign up here. Help me, somebody. Listen, if God's called you to do something, He'll give you faith enough and strength enough to do it. Amen. Sarah learned that. How would you like to learn it the same way she did, old ladies? I got at least a grunt. 
That's what I'm trying to always tell our youngsters. We got Amy sitting back there chewing her fingernails. There's no one got uh, Donna's done run out on. <laughs> Say, y'all, listen. You can build the church up. Anybody follow me? Was my mic not on? <laughs> Have six or eight more kids. <laughs> And between the two, I mean, that'd be what, 12, 18? That's another Sunday school class. And then pray for the supernatural that some of the more mature sisters will go ahead and throw a few more in it. How would you like God to do it that way? That's what He chose, it'd be just right. Sarah did it, y'all. By faith. That's all it takes. Well, our preacher don't have a degree. What's the old saying? No, but the judge giving the first degree when he was in there. <laughs> That's not what's necessary. Oh, well, we need a doctor. Well, we, what are you sick? <laughs> Yo, what we need is God. Amen. Amen. And she learned, and we can learn, and Paul's trying to tell her, listen, y'all, you can learn too. Well, then there was Abraham again, as we picked up our reading this morning. He had to learn to trust God even with his children. Amen. I don't know about you, this one's easier to preach than it is to live. Mm -hmm. My son called me uh, two or three days after his little boy was, was born. He said, Dad, they tested his hearing. Something's wrong. I told him, son, You've been learning how to trust God for you. Now you're going to fix to start learning what it's like to trust God for your children. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'd rather lay right down and take a nap and do that. <laughs> but it works. And listen, to Abraham, that's all I'm asking you to do is put his life on the altar and sacrifice him. We're not given the details, but Abraham knew that if God had promised, God could do it. Amen. And he had to learn to have even your children. You do what I tell you, I'll take care of all the rest of it. Oh man, we're so afraid. I can't spank my little boy. That's cruel. The social services will come right me up a ticket. Well, who are you going to go with, y'all? The social service or God? Amen. And by the way, when you stand before God, the social service ain't going to be there to bail you out. <laughs> Anybody? God said do it, and I'll take care of the rest of it. I read it just the other week. Sp don't spare because of his crying. Any of y'all ever heard your child cry when you spanked him? No, no, some of y'all, oh yeah. No, we don't spank, we do time out. I remember reading that in the book of Old Nehemiah. <laughs> no, but Abraham learned. How could you do it? Well, by faith. <laughs> by faith. Jacob. I love this one, y'all. He trusted God and worshipped God while he was dying. Mm -hmm. Now, you know something's wrong with him. Most of us are scared, slammed to death, and die. Amen? <clears throat> oh, I don't want to die. I don't want to hurt. I don't want to this. I don't want to that. Y'all guys got all that in his, in his little box of tricks. He's going to do it the way he wants it. And you're not going to affect it. Amen. And so I know some of y'all things get mad about this. I'm giving you a lot of fodder today. I realize. Listen, you can jog 50 miles every morning. You can eat nothing but tofu and asparagus, and you're still going to die. Amen? Amen? <laughs> You're going to be laying in the box and they're going to say, well, he sure looks good because of all that tofu and asparagus and jogging, but he still looks dead. <laughs> Anybody? He, because God's got life in his hand. And somehow, this old boy, Jacob understood even on the way out, leaning on his staff, he's worshiping God Almighty. What a way to go, y'all. Now that would probably mess up a few of our funerals. Anybody? They come in all long face, drawn out, and then slow that music down. It sounds too much like happiness. <laughs> it, 
this thing morbid and gruesome. No, no, no. And then you got catfish up there leaning on his staff, worshiping God, because God never does nothing wrong. And he went from here to glory. Amen. Some of y'all will get excited at the rapture. <laughs> I hope that's all I can say. Moses. His parents obeyed God. And you just believe that it's the truth and believe it's for me. And then we do it. Amen. Anybody here have trouble believing in what your daddy told you to do? He meant for you to do it? I never had any trouble. And all you got to do is get in the book and realize if it's in there, it's for me. And that's what I'm going to do. Then Moses, he chose the Christ life. Suffering the Christ life over pleasure. It amazed me going through this list how many of these things perfectly relate to what's going on in the church today. We got people who won't go to a Bible believing church because it cancels all their fun. I can't go to Kelly's tonight if I go to your church this morning. And I can't go to the brewing station this afternoon if I hear about all that stuff around the Bible all morning long. I want some pleasure and I want Christ. Hey, listen, pleasure comes from knowing God. He said, you only say that because you're old. Well, I am old. I can't help that. But I've never known, y'all, and I speak for you. I'm just, you never know pleasure until you know what's like to be right with God. No hangovers. You ain't got nobody trying to shoot you. You ain't got to worry about going to jail. In this world, well, i got to have pleasure. Listen, Moses knew that the reward would be worth whatever it costs him to give up the pleasures in this world and serve God. Amen. How could you do that? By faith. Amen. I, I just love it, y'all, in this way. And then finally, Moses personally applied the blood, knowing that nothing else could save them. Well, that was right with meaning, isn't it? We ain't going to get out of Egypt if we don't personally apply the blood. By faith, the church saw the miraculous. The Red Sea opened. By faith, the church saw their enemies destroyed. The Red Sea closed. By faith, the church saw the miraculous happen. The walls of Jericho came down. By faith, the church saw the enemies destroyed. All the folk in Jericho were taken down. How'd they do it? Simply because they believed the Word of God to be the truth, and they believed the Word of God was for them. All of it. All of it. All of it. No one in here is listed as an editor. Amen. Just a believer. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to elder number 10, and I've got to quit with this. Rahab, the heart. You'll forgive me, but just so we understand each other, you know what a harlot is. That's King James for a prostitute. Wait a minute. You know that can't be right. Verse 31 must be something a man stuck in it. Now, I promise you, if it were possible, a man would have took it out now. Uh, it's in there. <clears throat> well, what'd she do by faith? You remember the story. But y'all talk about being ripe with meaning. What did she do? <coughs> Plainly stated, <coughs> she perished not with them that believed not. By faith. She perished not. Now I read that thing two or three times, but wait a minute, there's something in here that sounds familiar, man. She perished not with them that believed not. By faith. <coughs> And if you'll permit it, think about it this way. You ever heard of John 3.16? And by the way, y'all, and I'm not trying to be a wise guy, everybody here in your bathroom probably has a plunger. Everybody, you know what a plunger? Somebody think of a plunger? What are you talking about? You've got to live down where I am to be able to appreciate it. We, one of the trumpet players has got a plunger right over there. <laughs> I looked over there and they had it on the end of the trumpet. <laughs> I thought, I ain't never used my plunger that way. <laughs> I had to use a plunger the other day. Forgive me for saying. Do you know I'm telling you the truth on the handle of my plunger? Embossed in plastic. It says, and I quote, get a handle on life, John 3.16. I'm thinking, woo! Give me for hollering. 
ain't hollered in the bathroom. <laughs> I thought it's good to know I got a comrade somewhere in this world who can appreciate what I'm going through right now. <laughs> John 3.16. <laughs> God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. I submit to us today, Rahab simply did John 3.16 and she didn't perish. Amen. And she won't destroy. And she became a part of the church of God. In fact, her offspring birthed Jesus the Messiah. Amen! Amen. God can take I gotta calm down. Hang on. God can take the worstest and do the bestest if we'll simply exercise faith. That's all. Amen. She didn't have to go get cleaned up. She didn't have to go get her a facelift. She didn't have to make her way down the belt and get her a new suit of clothes. All she had to do was believe that God's word was the truth and that it applied to even her. I'm talking about she got saved, children. Amen. She went from the wrong side to the right side. Amen. She went from shaking in her boots to sleeping at night. She went from having a family she was concerned about to having a family that knew God like her. She went from the outside to the inside, all by simply believing the Word of God. Oh, one of these days I'm going to turn over a new leaf and Start going down there to the church house and, and I'm going to get right with God. Y'all, why wait? That's like me telling her, listen, I know you packed me a lunch today. I know you made me one of bloody sandwiches and probably got like 14 side dishes and something sweet. But I think I'll wait. I think I'll put it off a week or two. Why eat it now? Just because my belly's growling and my mouth's watering, I can't stand it, I'm so hungry. I think I'll put it off. Why put it off, y'all? Amen. There is nothing like walking with God. Amen. And it's not always sweetness. I realize that. But all you got to do is open up the book and realize what don't taste sweet now soon will. Amen. It really will. Good night, I reckon, in this world. I've been into something the other night. I don't even remember what that thing was. In fact, I don't think whoever put it in there knew what it was. But then I got down to the good stuff. I thought, oh, maybe that's just the way you have to make this thing work. I don't know about this. I don't know about fixing it. I just know how to eat it. God promised us. Lo, well, I'm with you always. Even to the end of the world. That's right. You're here today, and you're more or less on your own. We read the other night Psalm uh, number nine, last verse uh, in that uh, psalm. David is praying that men would realize that you're just men. Uh, that, that's all we are. Uh, if you had four of me and boiled me down to a thick paste, I'm still just a man. <laughs> And I have my weaknesses and I have my limitations and I can't affect what other people do to me, for me, around me. We've got to take what we get, Stuart, amen? And jokers use all that bad language. You feel like you want to fill their mouth up with 90-pound felt? You can't do it. I mean, as soon as they spit it out, they'd be right back here at you again. But in Christ, we can overcome. In Christ, we can have victory. No matter where we find ourselves, we've always got the friend that sticks closer than a brother right there with us. He said, but yeah, you don't know what I've done. I don't need to know what you've done. I know what I've done. He forgave that. And it don't matter what you've done. Amen. He'll forgive. Listen, if he'll take the prostitute, he'll take me. And if he'll take the prostitute, he'll take you. And if he'll take the prostitute, he'll take anybody. If you'll come by faith. Amen. Believe that this is the Word of God. And Jesus said, if you'll try it, you'll know and believe it's for you. As long as you hold Jesus off at arm's distance, 
you've not done but half the recipe. <clears throat> you believe it's the truth, but until you make it your very own, you really won't understand faith. Amen. This morning I'm going to invite you to come. You said it's so much I don't understand. Well, that's fine. Fifty years from now will be the same way. <laughs> but he'll give you a little more, a little more, a little more, and a little more. I promise you, you'll never regret giving Christ his way in your life. Would you come today? Would you let him have his way? Completely. A hundred percent. 99 won't work, not with your spouse, nor with your Savior, but 100%. I'm going to ask you to bow with me as we pray. Our group's going to come and sing a song for us. And while they sing, all of us will have an opportunity in a public place to have a private moment with the lover of our soul. He knows our thoughts. He knows, Scripture says, our down-sitting, our uprising. He knows everything about us. You needn't worry that God's going to find something out about you. God knows everything about us already. And still calls. Never embrace Christ as Savior. Today's the day to do that. You know Jesus personally, but you've not been walking with Him by faith. Today's the day to get back on track. Same way. By faith. Father, in Jesus' name, please do what only you can do. And that's win our heart. And we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, we remain praying.